Hello everyone. My name is Hemu. And guys, before starting your today's Palo Alto Firewall question and answer interview session, let me just tell you we have I have one announcement. So guys, we are starting one Palo Alto plus F5 LTM live batch basically. And that that live batch we are starting from 80th of Feb. And it's a weekend's batch. So your classes will happen Saturday and Sunday. First, we will try to complete your Palo Alto firewall. And this particular Palo Alto firewall needs around eight weeks to complete. And once your Palo Alto will complete, we will start your F5 LTM and F5 LTM needs around seven weeks. And the timing for this particular session is 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. IST, Saturday and Sunday. And the fees for this training is 10,000. So this is the one update which I'm having now. One more update, guys. All, all your recording regarding the Palo Alto and your Panorama interview question and answers, you will get into my video portal. And this is the course. For, so you have to purchase that course and the cost for this particular training is one INR because we cannot able to set zero here. We have that type of limitation on our video portal. So that's why we will put the cost here, one INR, okay? So in this portal, you will get all the recording. Apart from this, I will also upload these recordings into my YouTube channel. So in YouTube channels also, you will get these particular recordings, okay? So this is the some details now. Guys, if you remember, if you remember yesterday, we have discussed these initial five questions and today I will try to cover remaining five questions actually. So guys, in your interview, if somebody ask, what is wildfire in your Palo Alto firewall or can you explain the wildfire operation? Or maybe if they are asking, what is the sandboxing technology or technique in your Palo Alto firewall? Or maybe they will ask you in this way, how your Palo Alto firewall protect us from the real time malware? Or how your Palo Alto fire protect us from the unknown malware? From the malware whose signature we don't have into our signature database all such kind of things comes under your wildfire guys what all such kind of things comes under the wildfire feature of your palo alto firewall now let me just explain you how this wildfire feature works in your palo alto environment let's suppose we have a setup like this I have my Palo Alto firewall here. I have an internal PC here. And this is my internet. Let's suppose here we have one of the server for any website. Okay, let's say this server is belongs to abc.com. Now on this server, basically what there's a one hacker who has installed some type of malware. that malware available inside that particular server. Now, let's suppose now on this PC, what he has done, he has just opened his browser and he has just typed https colon abc.com. Means he is now trying to start communication with this particular server. Now, because it's a web server, so when he will try to access the web page of from of that particular abc.com, what will happen when he will send the HTML code along with these codes, you will see they will also try to send the malware code or that malicious code through these particular codes. And the thing is guys, because you know, on my Palo Alto firewall, we don't have any type of signature for this malware. It's a pretty new malware. One of the hacker community, they have just created this malware. So what will happen? Because you know, it's a new malware, which means your Palo Alto firewall is not having any type of signature database, right? So the thing is now how your Palo Alto firewall protect 
from such kind of malwares. It will protect with the help of wildfire feature. If you heard the name Palo Alto used to say, they will provide they will provide us the zero day protection from the unknown malwares and unknown domains. They used to claim that particular point because they have this particular feature inside their firewall, which is wildfire. So what used to happen? Let's suppose. Now this particular file, this malicious code file, when it is reached into your Palo Alto firewall, so what will happen now? Palo Alto firewall receive this particular file, which have some type of malware. So what will happen now? Palo Alto check this particular file. What? File signed by the trusted signer or not? What is? What do you mean by the trusted signer? Anyone know? What is the trusted signer? Guys, anyone know what is this trusted signer? Let me give you one a small example. Let's suppose somebody is trying to download this global protect client software. Who is the who is the owner of this global protect client software? Palo Alto means this particular software belongs to the Palo Alto, which means Palo Alto is a trusted signer, right? Let's suppose you are downloading some operating system for Cisco routers. That operating system file is signed by the Cisco. So guys, every application, they have a signature. So what used to happen, this particular Palo Alto, check the signature of that particular file. If it is signed by the trusted signer, what it will do, it will just allow this particular file. Let's say we go, you know, this malware is a new malware, right? And that generally, this malware is not signed by any trusted signer, right? Why Cisco will sign for this malicious file? They will not, right? Which means now it's this is this this file is not signed by any trusted signer. No means now it will move here. Now what your Palo Alto will do? Now Palo Alto create the hash of that particular file means it will try to create the MD5 hash with the help of MD5 hashing algorithm. It will create the hash of hash on that file. And after that, now it will check that particular hash inside the wildfire database. Your Palo Alto Fire has a wildfire signature database. And it will check that particular received hash with the wildfire database. If hash for this particular file is available inside your wildfire database, what will happen? Generally, guys, every file inside the wildfire database has some type of verdict. Palo Alto used to categorize the files into four verdicts. So let's suppose verdict of the file is benial, means benial is a clean file. Benial is a clean file. So for such kind of files, my Palo Alto file will allow. If the verdict of the file is grayware, means grayware is also a clean file, but the behavior looks like a malware. But even though it's a clean file, it's not a malicious file, but the behavior of that file looks like a malware. That type of file is also allowed by the Palo Alto firewall. Now, let's suppose the file verdict is malware. In that case, Palo Alto file right away block, the, block that particular file. Or Palo Alto file right away block the access of that particular file here. That it will basically put that particular session into the discard state. Previously session was on active state and that session right away go into the discard state due to the 
due to the thread because this malware comes under the threads, right? And let's suppose an instead of this malware, let's say we are accessing some type of domain, some type of phishing domain, right? If it's a domain, then they will check this domain belongs to the phishing or not. And what they will do, they will block the phishing related domains as well. But guys, because as I have mentioned, it's a new malware, which means we don't have any type of hash in the wildfire database, right? So what now it will move towards the next check inside your Palo Alto 5. Now Palo Alto 5 try to check what is the size of the file? Because you know, fire my Palo Alto will check the size of the file. If the file size comes under the configured limit. Every file type has some type of limits, guys. And where you will able to find these limits, if you will go into your Palo Alto firewall here, into device tab, into your wildfire. Just wait here. Just loading. Now you can go here. You can see if a file type is P type, then it will upload the files whose size is either 16 MB or below. If your file type is APK, then size is 10 MB. PDF file size is 3072 KB. Microsoft Office file size is 16,384 KB. Jar file is 5 MB. Flash file is also 5 MB, right? So we have a file types. According to this file types only, it will basically try to upload. So what it will check now, it will check the file size. <coughs> if file size is maximum, let's suppose this malware, this file type is a bad file and the size is 100 MB. What it will do, it will allow that file. But guys, tell me one thing. Can we have a packet of 100 MB? No, right? Generally packet size is 1500 bytes maximum. If we will club multiple packets, then in that case only maybe size will increase, right? But always you will see the file malware file size is very less in size, okay? So if file size comes under the File size less than the configured maximum. What it will do now, it will send that file towards the wildfire database or towards the wildfire cloud. Means it's a pal, it's that particular cloud available in your Palo Alto environment. It's a, and on that particular cloud, what used to happen in wildfire cloud, they have a all type of devices here. They have a wear metal devices. They are, they have all kind of windows operating system, all type of Linux operating system, all type of iOS devices. They have everything there. And what they used to do, they will try to run that particular file into all such kind of devices, operating systems. And what they will, they will try to observe the behavior of that particular file means they will do the wildfire analysis. And guys, this, this particular thing is also known as sandboxing. So do not confuse with the sandboxing. If somebody asked the term sandboxing in Palo Alto Firewall, your wildfire is equal to sandboxing. So they, they run that file into all type of bare metal hard devices, all type of virtual devices, right? On all type of Windows operating system and they will just observe the behavior. According to the behavior of that particular file, what they generate the verdict. If file behavior is, Okay, means if file is behaving, if file is clean, which means file behavior is okay. In that case, they will put that file in a benial category. If file behavior is, is it's a clean file, but looks like a malware, then they will provide the verdict as graveware. If your file having any type of malware, then file behavior is, looks like a malware. So they will put, get, they will, provide the verdict, which is malware. If it, this file behaving like a 
fishing, then they will provide the verdict to fishing. And what they will do? They will right away inform the firewall regarding the verdict of that particular file. Let's suppose a verdict is fishing or malware. What will happen? You parallel to firewall, stop processing or stop the downloading of this file here. And what it will do? It will change the session from active to discard state right away. So that's how you parallel to firewall protect us from the unknown malwares. And what it will do, it will up, update the file list into the wildfire database. And also it will generate the signature in case of verdict is malware and it will send that signatures to the firewalls means now it will send that signature to this firewall along with all the parallel to firewall across the globe from any organization. All these firewall, they will get the signatures right away immediately. It will send that signature of that particular malware to the firewalls who has the wildfire subscription. Within five minutes. And if the if the firewall who don't have a wildfire subscription, they will get the get the dead signature in the daily updates. So within 24 to 48 hours, they will get these updates as a antivirus updates. So that is your guys wildfire operation. Right now, I have explained you the process of public cloud wildfire. Now, sometimes what happens, guys, like defense organization, and instead of sending these files towards the Palo Alto cloud, which is a public cloud, what they they used to purchase one box, which is WF 500. And on that box, basically, they your Palo Alto, this WF 500 box will do the all type of wildfire analysis. And this is known as private cloud. Nowadays, people are also using hybrid cloud model means they have a public environment. If this public environment or using this WF 500 box, which is a private environment or this box, if he is not able to identify the file or he is not able to generate the verdict in that case, what he can communicate with the public cloud environment or public wildfire cloud. So that's how your wildfire operation works. That is your wildfire in your Palo Alto firewall. So that is guys all about your. What is wildfire? Explain the wildfire operation. So this process is your wildfire operation. This entire process. There is one question wildfire and auto focus both are same or different both are different man. Cool. Let me just move further. What are the modes supported by Palo Alto firewall for management? Means guys, let's suppose we have a Palo Alto firewall. This is my Palo Alto firewall here. Let's suppose I am having here Palo Alto 820 box. Now, guys, if you want to manage this firewall, how you will manage? Generally, if you want to do any type of configuration or you want to fetch anything, how you will do that? What is the first option, which is graphical user interface? We can take the GUI of this Palo Alto firewall. The second option. We have the CLI option as well. In CLI option, we have a three ways. We can get the Palo Alto Firewall CLI with the help of console cable. We can get the Palo Alto Firewall CLI with the help of SHS. And we can also get the Palo Alto CLI with the help of Telnet, right? The, what is the third option we will be having? If we have a panorama environment, then we can able to manage the Palo Alto file from the panorama. The fourth one is we can also able to manage this Palo Alto file with the help of XML APIs. So guys, these are the four type of four modes which is offered by the Palo Alto firewall for the management purpose. 
in this palo alto firewall guys it has a dedicated management port here it has a dedicated console port here so you have to configure your management interface with the ip address default gateway and subnet mask and on this management interface you can able to enable the shs you can enable you are a, able to enable the telnet you can able to enable http <coughs> you can able to enable https all these things guys let me ask you one common question here let's suppose i have decided to this i have decided to configure something inside this palo alto firewall with the help of ansible script now which type of management thing i have to use in your palo alto firewall for managing this palo alto firewall with the help of ansible scripts which mode i have to use i have to use shs or i have to use xml api or gui or panorama which one guys all type of automation stuff if you are doing the automation of your palo alto firewall it is possible with the help of xml api so we will use here xml apis okay just remember generally we always used to do the palo alto automation with the help of xml apis we can use the shs as well but that's not a good way we cannot able to automate everything with the help of shs if you are doing the automation with the help of shs in that case you have to remember the command and everything you have to run this set command delete command all such kind of command but all type of automation tool they will use the xml apis because you know it will support the xml calls all the object inside your palo alto firewall they will support the xml apis they used to support the xml api calls basically okay just remember this thing now did this question become very very popular because you know nowadays people are focusing on your automation steps and all okay cool now guys let's try to understand what are the action available in your url filtering guys anyone remember what are the actions available in your palo alto firewall for url filtering reply on the chat who know url filtering action let's say you wants to block some urls what type of action you can able to set we have one action which is alert we have one action which is continue we have an action which is override we have an action which is allow right so these are the generally actions we will have we will be having in your palo alto firewall if i'll go into my objective into my url filtering default you can see here if i'll go here default i will not able to modify let me go inside that one everything i just received from the panorama i'll just clone it go here now you can see we have the action which is alert allow block continue override so these are the five action which is available in your palo alto firewall in for the url filtering what is the last one which is block now 
let's try to understand all these particular actions guys so if you remember we have the action which is allow what this action will do let's suppose we have write one rule on your palo alto 5 allow the social networking so if somebody is trying to access the facebook.com because you know facebook comes under the social networking category so we will go with the action which is allow in that case what your palo alto 5 will do it will simply allow that allow the access for all the social networking websites so it will allow the access but it will not generate i can write not generate the log you will not able to see any type of log into this section if you will remember guys in monitor tab we have this url filtering here you will not able to get the get any information regarding this particular url see generally otherwise we used to get all these details url logs but if you will just go with the allow action you will not able to get the you will not able to see anything with regards to the logs so guys the best way if you want to allow the access of a website but you want the log in that case what we have to choose the alert action so means an alert it will allow plus it will generate the log and continue what will happen continue action is known as temporary block means it will give you one warning message if you will access you are trying to access any website what it will give you one warning message do you want to continue or not if you will click on that continue button then only you can able to access that particular website and guys in that case what it will do it's a temporary block if you if you click on continue button means you will get one page here stating that you want to continue the access of that website or not and it will also generate the log so that's the meaning of continue and after that we have our next action which is override and override this is also known as temporary block here also it will generate the log but instead of this time temp in temp override action what it will use to do it will give you one page now on this page what you have to you have to put the password there is a one admin one url password that password you have to enter if you will enter the correct password then only you can able to access the website so in that case what will happen in override what you will get you will get one page one continue page but here this time when you will you you will only able to click on continue after putting the correct password if you will put the wrong password you will not able to get the access of that website so that's the meaning of your override action and in block means access is blocked or access is denied plus it will generate the log that is the meaning of your block action in the url so guys these are the five actions we will be having in urls now let me ask you one question i have a policies so guys in my policy i have written in my application based policies i have the rule i have the deny i have denied the facebook.com or i have denied the facebook application and in url filtering i have allowed the facebook access what will happen in that case what do you guys think anyone know 
in url filtering i am allowing the facebook but in application i am denying the facebook so guys just remember one thing if you have a deny anywhere either in application either in url so anywhere if you have a deny for a particular url or for anything like for any destination as well your palo alto firewall always drop the packet always deny the packets okay it will always deny it will not allow just remember one thing always if like let's suppose you have a you have a one security policy rule right where you have put one destination which is denied right and like you have put the ip address of facebook which is allowed and you have the application where you will put the deny then you have you are aware you have allowed then it will deny if you have a deny statement anywhere your traffic will be denied always remember now guys anyone know what is url filtering solution and how many type of url filtering solution supported by the palo alto firewall guys somebody ask what is url filtering solution in your palo alto firewall you have to simply explain you have to simply explain url filtering solution in your palo alto firewall is used for allowing or either denying the url or a uri so let's suppose if i will type https colon slash youtube.com this is known as url let's suppose what is uri let's suppose i am now putting some specific specific youtube videos i am referring some specific youtube videos like then i have one video here right that is known as uri means the full path is known as uri if i can just play this video now this entire thing is uri and guys in this particular this part is known you known as url and everything till here is known as uri so guys we will use this particular solution for blocking both the things and if somebody really wants to understand what is how the main mode your ipsec main mode in detail you can just refer this particular video okay now let me just go here now let me just go here so guys now you got the point here this url filtering solution we use for blocking or allowing the urls or either uri now guys can you can anyone able to tell me what is the use case for the uri if you want to block the uri what is the what is the use case in which scenario we have to block the uri anyone know any use case for that guys let me tell you one thing let's suppose in facebook.com there is a one post is available on that post it has some illegal content and you wants to block the access of that illegal content how you will do that or it will use to block the sensitive content like some post who is promoting the terrorism who is promoting some type of pornography related content right so if you want to block such kind of content what you have to go with the uri that is the so url filtering solution is used for blocking the urls or uri and guys palo alto offers two types of url filtering solution 
the first solution is known as pen dv and the second solution is known as bright cloud now guys this pen dv this particular solution is managed by managed or maintained by palo alto team and this particular solution is managed or maintained by the company known as webroot inc means bright cloud is a third party url filtering solution guys when your palo alto firewall was growing that time people were using the bright cloud solution for url filtering but nowadays everyone is using the pen dv why they are using pen dv because you know pen dv has a very very tight integration with your palo alto firewall or with your pen os and how this pen dv is hosted guys palo alto firewall they have hosted this pen dv cloud over the aws environment at five locations across the globe okay so that is the main so these are the two types of solution which is offered by the palo alto five now maybe in your interview they will ask can we run pen dv in bright cloud at the same time on the firewall so guys just remember one thing we are not able to run both the solution together either we have to run pen dv or either we have to run bright cloud if you will let's suppose you have enabled the bright cloud in that case your pen dv is automatically disabled and if you will enable the pen dv then your bright cloud will be disabled and guys you have to purchase the license for both the solutions and license cost is also similar and nowadays everyone is using pen dv because you know it has a very very tight integration let me just show you what do you what i am what i am referring with regards to the tight integration so i am on my palo alto firewall guys my cli is visible to everyone yes or no in the chat please okay i'm about to log in on the firewall so guys if you run this command so url cloud status so guys this is the tight integration you will get cloud is connected license is valid and right now it has a connect you with the second pen db server they have a servers at five locations one is in north virginia then they have one one is in europe they have one in singapore and i think they one have they they have one in japan somewhere like like that they have they have distributed these five locations you can check the version what is the latest version for url database over the cloud and what is the data in your system see the status is good they are running the same protocol version and compatibility check the compatibility they are compatible and if you will run this command let me just try to run one command grep pattern url url mp log there is a one daemon dev server who used to take care of these things and guy you can see they have a server list right now they have connected with your second server you can able to see the entire election process server 3 right because and all these server details is hard coded inside your palo alto firewall guys just remember server 2 server 3 all the details you will see here okay now let me just move forward towards the next question which is 
what is kept a portal in your palo alto firewall so guys let's try to understand this kept a portal concept let's suppose i have a setup like this i have my palo alto firewall I have my LAN infra. I have my WAN infra here. And here I have internet connectivity with the internet service provider. Now, here I have around 100 users. I have around 100 users and all these 100 users, they are using Windows operating system. Okay, and I have here one Active Directory server. And all these 100 systems, they are a part of this particular, they are a part of domain. And I'm running this particular domain services on my AD server. And guys, in this Palo Alto Firewall, I am having some policies on the basis of user ID. Means I have the some policy on the visual user ID. Means if if traffic coming from let's suppose like user one, I will allow. If traffic coming from user two, I will allow. I am not using the IP address. I am using the username and group name on my security policies. So guys, for these hundred PCs, who is a part? who is running this your windows operating system for them because they are a part of your active directory means in this palo alto firewall it can able to create a user to ip mapping right and we can able to configure the user base policy but let's suppose apart from them we do have around new 10 users these are the new 10 users. And these users, they are running Linux. Guys, tell me one thing. Can these Linux machine, we can able to add any your active directory. Can these Linux machine can be a part of your domain controller? We cannot able to add these Linux machines into, into as a domain controller. Now, and if you want to restrict what, whatever policies we have applied for these peoples, we also want to apply the similar policies for these users. Now, how to achieve that task? That type of task we will achieve with the help of captive portal. What we will do when these people, they are trying to access any type of website. What will happen that time my Palo Alto Fire will send one page. It will send the captive portal page where they have to log in first. They have to enter their credentials. They have to enter their credentials. Once they will enter the credentials, now my Palo Alto Fire get the IP details. It will get the user detail. It will create the user to IP mapping. And because you know it has the user to IP mapping, now it can able to enforce all the user based policies for these people as well. So your captive portal is a solution which we generally use to enforce the one of the portal where user needs to enter their credentials if they wants to access anything through our firewall so that's the concept of your captive portal captive portal we will use to enforce our authentication policies means we will authenticate our users generally this captive portal stuff or solution we will use for the Linux machines. And let's suppose there are some guests 
who is coming into your infrastructure and they wants to access the internet through your firewall generally you will not allow the direct access of the internet to these people's right so in these type of users what you have to do you can create the temporary username and password for them and they will use the temporary username and password so when your firewall will try info send the captive portal detail they will put these they will put these credentials and they can able to access the internet so in such kind of environment we will use the captive portal solution in your palo alto firewall to enforce the user based security policies so guys these are the five questions which i want to cover in your today's session yes i got one question here it is same as a yes it is similar to your cisco ice cisco ice is also used for the same thing it will control your authentication and authorization kind of things okay